committee chair. I'm muted, sorry about that. Um, thank you so much, Brian. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jennifer Adeli, and I am running for the House of Delegates in the 34th District. I'm so happy to be with FCDC for the second time this week after speaking at the monthly meeting last Tuesday, a meeting I would hate to miss even before I was running for office. So I want to share with you guys tonight something a little bit different than a normal kind of campaign stump speech. The other day, I saw this inspirational quote that goes around social media from time to time, and maybe you've seen it too. It says something like, what would you do if you were not afraid? And usually it has a picture of somebody maybe climbing a mountain or lifting big weights. And I know it may sound cheesy, but this saying has really spoken to me over the years. Now, it certainly was in the back of my mind as I landed in DC 25 years ago with nothing but $200 in my pocket and a stack of resumes. I certainly faced fear when I quit my good paying job as a government consultant for Booz Allen Hamilton to start my own successful small business a decade ago. And there's no greater fear to face than finding your own lump in your breast like I did in 2014 and coming out ahead. But to me, this quote is not about not feeling fear. It's about not living in fear. So when I saw it the other day, of course, Today, running for office, I found myself thinking about this quote again, but in a totally new context, in the context of politics and Virginia and where we are today and where we're going in the future. I asked myself, what would Virginia voters do today if they were not afraid? You might be asking yourself right now, what would I do if I felt liberated from fear? What if voters were reminded that we, Democrats, we have the turnout, the volunteers, the donors, and most importantly, we have the values and the community behind us? What bold choices would they be empowered to make with the right candidates to vote for? Would they vote for the next generation to lead their district instead of the status quo? I think they will. Would they rally behind somebody who publicly supports repealing right to work instead of sidelining it? To me, it's clear that they would. Would they champion a new leader with 25 years experience like mine in the trenches bringing innovation to the hardest problems in government? Someone with the hustle to tackle the post-COVID world we face? That I know they will. Now I'm running for the 34th district because I believe voters are not afraid of change. They're actually seeking it. I hear it on the doors, I'm already knocking, and I see it in the grassroots activism. We are at a pivotal time in Virginia and in this country where we have to continue moving forward. We can't just rest on the incremental successes of the recent past. Now, I've seen the energy and the passion out of FCDC over the last four years. I've seen it as a district chair, and I've seen it as a key player in the committee overall. I know that we have what it takes to hold every delegate seat that touches Fairfax and to help pick up seats in other districts in the Commonwealth. And with that, I ask for your vote in the straw poll tonight, a vote for innovative leadership, a vote for the next generation to lead Virginia. And as the FCDC slogan says, to move Virginia forward. And of course, if you live in the 34th district, I also ask for your vote on June 8th or early voting starting on April 24th. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, and, and of course, in the 34th, we have uh, Delegate Kathleen Murphy. Delegate, welcome. Oh. There you go. Uh, thank you. Wait. We lost no, your video. No. Uh, oh, there you are. Well, I hit both of them at the <laughs> same time. It's typical. Thank, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for taking time out of your weekend to join us for this, uh, this debate. Um, I've been your delegate now for seven years in the 34th District, and I am running for re-election. Uh, we turned the 34th District from red to blue. When I first ran uh, against Barbara Comstock uh, in 2013, uh, it was a solidly red district and we came very, very close. I'm really proud of my record of accomplishment as a delegate. I have represented the values of the district and of the Democratic Party. 
I have been a leader on gun violence prevention issues in the House of Delegates. Uh, as the sister of a brother who was murdered, I have made gun violence prevention a priority. I passed one of the very first gun safety measures with the Republicans in majority in the House. And I've passed several others to protect victims of domestic abuse, including another one this year, which we're hoping that the governor will sign. I started the Gun Violence Prevention Caucus with my friend, Senator Adam Eben, and together we went across Virginia and led on the Safe Virginia Initiative with Eileen Fillercorn. I've stood up for our veterans to make sure they get the benefits they've earned. I started the Rare Disease Caucus and successfully passed legislation to help those with debilitating rare diseases get medical coverage. I'm a member of the Renewable Energy Caucus and we're focused on measures to protect our environment. I've worked with our community college on workforce development programs. I work with our business community to ensure that Virginia business is friendly so we can generate the tax revenues to pay for education, transportation, and important other programs that we all support. And I 100% support our unions, our teachers, and our schools. And I get an awful lot of support from our unions. I'm the vice chair of the Transportation Committee in the House of Delegates. I can promise you I have spent endless hours working with VDOT and Supervisor Faust and Senator Favola on the many transportation challenges that affect our district. I am vice chair of our Democratic Caucus in the House of Delegates. And I am proud of what we have been able to achieve. We have reoriented our Virginia priorities. We have enacted important measures to advance social justice and to protect our environment. But our work's not done. It is absolutely not done. And two years doesn't ensure that we have a permanent majority in Richmond. This year is vital, it is vital that we maintain the Democratic majority in the House of Delegates because if we don't, every measure that we passed in this last session will be undone by the Republicans, every single measure. With so many seats in play all across the Commonwealth, it is essential that we not make the 34th district in peril. And so I've proven I can hold the seat no matter what the challenge is. I've won these last two elections with nearly 60% of the vote. And there are so many more issues and so much more we wanna do. For me, it's a full-time job. I'm a proven leader. I'm a proven leader in Richmond and in the 34th in advancing our democratic values. And I ask you for your support so we can continue the progress that we have made and solidify our majority in the House of Delegates. And thank you. Thanks.